Hey Nami Nami, my witches and goblins, and whatever multi-class you play. Today we're doing another Halloween DIY, and it is this top, which I am in love with. In love with. Hello and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. I'm Bianca, and today I'm going to be talking about Halloween DIYs. Yes, sometimes I talk about books, but right now I am obsessed and entrenched with Halloween stuff in my life. Today I'm going to be talking about my Halloween cottage core plans and my first part of it, which is this cool top thing that I made from the wonderful linen that I found. While you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, you know, share this amazing video with all of your crafty friends that are also into Halloween stuff. If you've been following me at all, I've done a couple of little Halloween DIYs, and this is my latest one. I am fully embracing the season because it's been, it's been a hard year, fam. And I want to find joy in something, and I find immense joy in Halloween. So I don't know about you, but when I get really excited about something, I don't just go halfway. I make a list of things I want to do that's a mile long, including crafty stuff and sewing stuff. And this year I have a whole like thing that I'll show you or like a, a screen cap or clip of basically a cottage core Halloween wardrobe vision so it's like a lot of separates that are gonna have these really cool features that like I'll talk about in a second but I was pretty much like looking for these exact colors and fabrics um, because I wanted to go for like a pumpkin-y but not too pumpkin-y some places call it pumpkin spice um, like orange fabric, which I don't often wear. So as you can see, I was on the lookout for like an orange, kind of burnt orangey color, not Rebel Alliance orange, but like something with some red tones because I look a little bit better in red tones. Um, I also, because I'm making separates, I've been on the lookout for some wine and kind of cool gray colors and I managed to find those as well. So I'm gonna be really excited to show you what I'm making with those really excited for what the wine is going to be used for. So I was looking for very specific fabrics and I happened to be at Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to be doing a stash buster? Hmm? Listen, I promise that I'm going to use the scrap pieces from this linen project to make a ton of really cute Halloween accessories and things. I promise. Ugh. Promises, promises. May your linen fray upon washing. This is your warning. If I see another bag of new fabric enter this house before you finished this wardrobe project, I swear. How about this? I swear upon these fabric scissors that I will buy no more new fabric until I've used up at least this last batch of fabric that I just bought. And maybe also I might need to buy fabric for fashion school that I'm going to starting this week. I'll be watching. If you're new here, you might not know about the uh, haunted occupants of my sewing room. That was one of them, Scrap Monster. He's so feisty. Um, basically, a pile of my scraps became sentient and um, they judge me a lot. Back to this project. I was really excited about this because I wanted to basically make something with like these flowy poet sleeves and also be something long enough to like tuck into other pieces and also be a little flowy here. I did kind of Frankenstein a couple of things. Um, I will also take note that I made this yoke with these, I call them little bat wing details, the little, oops, I don't know what they are, but I'm calling them bat wing things and I love them. I love them. Um, so basically I Frankenstein this from two patterns ish. Um, for the yoke, I use this Simplicity pattern, Simplicity 8248. It's one of their 1930s vintage patterns. I just made it. If you've been watching my shorts or TikToks, you'll see that I made this in a light blue, beautiful fabric. Um, and I used the top part of this as inspiration because it has a yoke that you then gather on. So I used the the, the front of this to make this and pretty much I traced it out and then I made the little bat wing things on it. I made a muslin and made sure that fit and then I cut into the linen because I was not going to cut in 
to this beautiful linen until then. So I made the kind of this part first. Again, I made the bottom not very fitted. I wanted it to tuck in nicely to something. So I extended the bottom um, from that dress bodice quite a bit. For the sleeves, these are more like bishopy sleeves and I'll talk about my accessory that I'll make for them after all this. But for now, um, I used Simplicity D0827, which is their 1930s vintage um, pattern. I used the top of the sleeve. So these are like mutton leg sleeves. So the top is very puffy and the bottom's fitted. So I use both pieces in different ways. Pretty much I used the top part and I extended it down and made the bottom big and fluffy so I could get this bishop sleeve. So I had a sleeve, basically has a ton of body. Um, I just made a very basic little band to gather it around. I didn't do a collar on this because I actually plan on making interchangeable collars with contrasting fabrics that will go between all of my cutesy little Halloween cottage core stuff that I'm making. After I've cut into my um, pumpkin spice linen, the last bits of it to make a skirt piece, um, I will be using the scraps of that to make little gauntlets that'll go here that will turn this into a mutton leg thing. Uh, I've already cut out two pieces, but I, I do want to reinforce it with more. Um, so I used the little piece here that you see at the bottom of the sleeves, um, and I remeasured it to actually fit my elbow because I'm short and my arm's shorter. Um, and so I used that and I will be making these little mutton leg things. Um, so I'll make these little gauntlets to go here to gather it in. Um, so then they will be more like these kind of cool Darth Maul poet sleeves. Um, you'll notice too in these, I made a little batwing motif again. So we'll see how that turns out. It's actually inspired by an Edwardian illustration I found and I will maybe put a link in here. And let's go to the video. All right, so I'm using this Walking Dead fabric as my muslin. Um, it will be later used for other little scrap projects along the way, but I'm using this amazing fabric gifted to me by Historical Garments. Worth a follow if you're not already following her on Instagram. Um, so that's what I'm making my muslin out of. I showed you the pieces before and I used those vintage patterns to make this yoke neck. Um, this batwing yoke neck. I literally just took the yoke they had and added extensions to make this little motif. And this is how it looks. It's two sides sewn together pulled inside out and then sewn on top of a gathered piece of fabric. I'm so cute. Look at me attempting to model. Don't know what I'm doing. Don't even know if I'm in focus. Oh, so fabulous. Um, and so then I did the thing where I adjusted on the mock-up and then I took the mock-up apart. And that's how I got the pattern pieces I needed for the actual linen, which is great. Again, I think I've expressed enough anxiety over cutting into this linen um that this explains why I spent so much time on the mock-up phase um I'm definitely gonna like eventually I have the mock-up pieces in folders and I keep them in manila folders that are labeled and explain what adjustments need to be made for the final pattern piece which I'll be doing at some point later probably in the year and now I'm finally digging into my uh linen my beautiful burnt orange linen um, since the seam allowance is already in there, I just need to be up against the fabric. Um, I'm, I have replacement blades for my rotary cutter on the table, and yet I have still not replaced them. So that's why you see me going extra hard, going over things, using the scissors. I, why am I like this? I don't know. We're not perfect, family. I'm not perfect. But here we are. Anyway... I just love watching myself make more work for myself. Past Bianca, what were you doing? Anyway, here's pin together stuff on my work table. It's a little bobbin case is out because I need to wind some actual thread that'll go with everything. But yeah, here is like everything laid out and ready and cut. And I was really excited. I probably should steam everything one more time because um, linen, you know, you look at it wrong and it wrinkles. But here we are. I just really love this fabric, guys. Like, I know it's very silly to be so obsessed with this, but, like, I was so very pleased to find this. And then here is the uh, 
the thread I used. I broke into my big thread case. And this is a really interesting like ombre brown to orange to red. And I think it works perfectly actually. Like the oranges were just not close enough. Um, but I really liked this. And I, I did kind of like that it's this ombre. It might bug people, but no, I'm a fan. So yeah, working with this fabric was actually really smooth. Um, contrary to Scrap Monster, it didn't really fray a ton when I was working with it. Um, I do want to go in and finish some internal seams. Um, I did like baby's like second ever French seam on these sleeves to encase that. Uh, it's not perfect, but like that's what my sewing class later in the semester is for. Um, if you haven't been following, I just started fashion classes um, at my local community college and I'm like so fucking excited, like nerdily excited, like y'all. It's like a dream to be going to these classes. Anyway, I'm taking a patterning class right now. And then later in the semester, I'm taking a sewing 101 class. Um, and people were always like, I don't know why. Why would you take a sewing class? Um, because I was kind of taught by family and like through YouTube videos, which is not a problem. But it's also like not the same as doing a full, like, I mean, I say full. It's a one unit course. Doing a one unit class on like, what is, what do you do with a sewing machine? How do you use it? What, what am I doing, fam? Um, so I'm really excited about that. And, uh, what else am I taking? So I'm doing flat patterning, which will actually make my patterns better and maybe even give me the ability to make patterns that I will share with the world. Look at me struggling because I accidentally got that tip too stuck in the thing. No, I think I got the thread wrapped around the feed. Yeah, I got the thread wrapped around the feed. Oh, there we go. Free again. Um, so yeah. Uh, hopefully that will um, free me up to be able to like share pattern stuff and maybe even be more technical in these videos to give you information on like how I did this so that you could do it yourself. Like I know that I'm just like, I took a yoke shirt that I already did and I extended it, made a cool little motif. But you probably want more info than that. You, you might even want just like a printout PDF. So hopefully that will be coming along the way um, as I progress through fashion glasses. Here I am at night. I did not color correct this to look better because it was at night. I was literally sewing. Um, cause you know, sewing whenever I have a chance between work things and other little freelancey things and house needs and homework and all the things. Um, I did hand gather the sleeves. I just really wanted that to be more perfect and I have not yet mastered how to do gathering on my machine. Uh, I was also a little bit worried about doing too much with the linen on the machine with like tugging and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just hand gathering the sleeves for that perfect little floofy sleeve that I, oh, so excited about. So excited about. There's just like random thread from my shittily done French seam. As I'm just like, what is this? What am I doing? Why am I annoyed with it? Just let it go. Let it go. And yet. Anyway. So it was exciting. I really like this project. Um, and I do have enough fabric to make you a nice, beautiful skirt. And uh, that's my little scrap projects that are, that are going to come along. Ugh, next day. Back at it. I think I literally like hand gathered this and that was it. I was like, I'm done for the night. I'm going to bed. Um, look at me looking at my phone, trying to find things to listen to. Maybe responding to texts. Maybe asking my husband what's for lunch. Probably asking my husband what's for lunch. Let's be real. Uh, that's the kind of life we lead. So yeah, I'm just um, sewing the sleeve casing on the outside and then I'll be flipping it inside and sewing it down that way but it was pretty it came together really easily and really nicely um yeah I can't wait I cannot wait to finish this like little project that I'm doing and then in a bit you'll see me modeling the finished piece um but just I love the flow I love the weight of this um yeah you'll see me right now um, putting this sleeve on again, double checking it works, and then there's the casing that I'm sewing down on the inside. Um, I could have done this inside out, 
Um, but I actually think the sleeve, actually, I think I know why I didn't do it. I believe the sleeve wrist area is actually um, too small to go around the sewing machine little, the little bit after you take off the compartment. So usually if I do with sleeves, I um, pull them around there. But I didn't this time. Because, uh, yeah, I think it was just too small. You can see me triple checking that it's still going through the right way. Um, I know that I probably could have done the stitch in the ditch thing, but I feel like I'm not great at that. Like, I feel like I have not yet mastered doing that to great success. Am I sewing through pens? Yeah. Did I learn anything from my recent, um, incident sewing through my finger? No. That's why you're still here with me. Because I'm real. I make mistakes. Not on this piece, though. This piece is perfect. It's glorious. <laughs> Alright. And then I gathered the top of the sleeve, too. I hand gathered it. Um, basically, I pinned the whole bottom in place, and then I gathered the top and kind of hand fiddled with the placement of where I wanted those gathers and, like, all that fun stuff. Um, I might add, like, a little cover piece of interfacing in this. Um, like, I've seen other professional garments done where you have a little, um, a little puff thing at the top of the sleeve just to give it some more body. I don't know. I kind of like the way it is now, but I'm also somebody who feels like there can never be too much of a puffy sleeve. And no, I did not grow up on End of Green Gables, shockingly. Anyway, enjoy my sewing. And that's how it was made. Um, it was pretty fun. I really enjoyed working with this fabric. As stressful as it was to be like, oh, I have to like wait to cut into it until I make a muslin. I actually really enjoyed doing that part. Um, so the top's pretty much done, except for I don't have the fastening, because I put fastenings in, um, in the back here, because it is quite a fitted collar so that it can put in cute little like Peter Pan and Batwing collars that I'm gonna be making. Um, so I just need to put that in and then of course, like I said, finish the gauntlet in the different um, collars that I'll be putting along here. I might put in some embroidery along the tips just to like highlight them, but I don't know. Um, for now, I think it's really cute and really awesome and I definitely want to use the yoke motif in like a different fabric again someday. But for now, it's just going to be this top. So in the process of making this, I was actually listening to an audiobook. So I don't know about you, but I definitely listen to audiobooks while I sew. I used to watch more TV shows while I did it, but I tend to also get lost in the TV show and like look at the costumes. So I had to stop doing that while I make sewing projects. Um, but I definitely was listening to an old favorite while making this, um, which very also feels very in season because it has to do with undead zombie-like things, which is the Old Kingdom series by Garth Nix. The audiobooks are read by Tim Curry, and he's amazing. So basically, and I'll be doing some videos on Sabriel soon, but Sabriel is the first book. You've probably seen the cover. 
badass lady with a sword. I've done a cosplay of her. Basically, Sabriel is this badass young girl who is suddenly swept up into this world that her dad kind of was trying to keep her safe from because he is the person who puts the dead to rest when the necromancers have brought them back and when the, the forces of dead bring back um, things from death, basically. Like, so she walks in death as needed to keep things all right. Um, but the old kingdom across the wall has been um, infested with the dead for a long time. The, the kings of old have died off. They've been in a regency that failed, which makes this a regency era story. Even if though it's a fantasy regency, I still consider it regency era now. Tim Curry does an amazing job reading these books. I love listening to him. I love these books. I grew up on them, but like um, the Tim Curry audiobooks are just superb. He reads the voice of Mogget, who was this um, very nefarious creature that helps ish Sabriel, mostly is sassy to her. Um, and it's just pure Tim Curry coming from Mogget's mouth. And I will never be able to hear Mogget without thinking of Tim Curry. Anyway, so that's what I've been listening to while making this project. It was really soothing, comforting, and I really liked it. So if you listen to audiobooks or podcasts or TV shows or whatever, well, you so would love to know. And I'd love for you to share whatever you love listening to because I want to know if there are other nerds out there who want to multitask and listen to something while they make a thing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be doing so many more Halloween builds. Why would you want to miss it? Come on, fam. I do have Patreon. Patrons get early access and uh, sneak peeks of all of my upcoming Halloween content, including patterns and other cool DIYs and behind the scenes stuff. So don't forget to join. Patrons at all tiers get access to my Jane Austen Avocado Toast Society Discord, which is a fun place. And patrons at the Lizzie Bennett here and above get a special shout out in my videos. Thank you for joining me and don't forget to make it so. <sighs> yes, the pandemic has pushed me to make puppets. <laughs> <laughs>